Hello all. In this short video, I want to show you the uh, pressure vessel design uh, or simulations in SolidWorks. So here is a simple pressure vessel that is designed and it is placed on these four uh, basically supports or these four legs basically. And here you can see it has so much of thickness, right? And it is made from uh, steel. And now we're going to go and uh, perform the simulations for it. Now, when you go to new study, uh, you cannot just go ahead and right away click on uh, pressure vessel design. Because the goal of this environment is really to show you the combined effect of several uh, static analysis, right? So in order to do that, you need, let's say, at least a couple of static analysis and then you can see the combined effect so you can go here to static and then uh, create one static analysis where let's say you um, create uh, the pressure inside the tank and you see the effect of that right so here i go on the fixture and then um, and then add fixed geometry here uh, on this bottom supports and then uh, I go inside and create the pressure, right? So let's just create a cut here. And I go, uh, it's just a virtual cut really, right? And then go here and create a pressure. And so I go inside here and then I add some um, pressure. So let's say uh, here you see I have uh, one megapascal, right? So um, if I OK that and then uh, go ahead and uh, mesh and run, right? Let's look at the maximum one mice as a stress. And uh, then we can also create safety factors or displacement, strain, anything like that. So you see here it's about... 16 megapascal okay and of course this is exaggerated this is not the true scale right this is so big so here to make it a little bit more relevant i change that uh, as you can see one two three four five six right i make it like five times bigger so I make it like five megapascal and run it one more time so the stresses are bigger, you see right now it's about 81, 82 megapascal. And again, as I said, this is not real scale, right? If you go to edit definition, you clearly can see that the scaling here is 910, right? If you use the true scale, it's not going to be anything like that, right? So if you do animation, right, of course, you're going to get some uh stress here in the part but it is clearly acting in the linear region and one of the important things is if you want to combine the stress results of several static animations together and do a superposition basically what you need is to make sure that the part is acting in the linear region okay so make sure these numbers are below the yield strength of the material that you can see here is 220 right and you can always double check that by uh, creating a safety factor plot, right? So you can always create a safety factor plot, let's say based on the one mice's stress. And you see here that like uh, the minimum thing I have is like 2.7, okay? So I'm good. It goes all the way to like 4,500 or so. So I am inside the linear region and this is good, right? So let's say this was the pressure, call it static one. Then I also go ahead and create another study, right? Again, static. And this time I do the same fixtures, right? But uh, I add temperature. So let's say this um, pressure vessel, right? It's uh, outside, it's kept outside and it is under the temperature load. So I go here and then, as I said, I will add the temperature and I will add it on the surfaces. And let's say I change that temperature to, let's say, um, 50 degrees Celsius, right? So it's very hot, basically. It's outside in a hot environment. And then again, I can mesh and run. 
and clearly this is going to expand now of course again it is going to show a true scale that is uh, it's not going to show the true scale it's going to show it with the bigger scale so you see this guy is like bulging big time but if you change that stress result you see the stress is like 64 right 64 is max and again this is not really gonna bulk that much okay again because the scaling is not one if you want you can go ahead and change it like look at that scaling it's like 3200 or so so if you do true scale it's absolutely not like that okay so but there is clearly up to 64 megapascal due to uh, thermal load and then up to 81 megapascal due to the pressure inside so now let's say I want to see what's the effect of both of these. That's where I go to new study. And here I go to what? To the pressure vessel design. And uh, I OK that. And you see here it doesn't have really too much. You can just run the study and then uh, basically you can get some results. You can compare something against something, right? Include images and generate reports. So it's not really meant to do its own analysis, just combining stuff. So you right click here on the setup and say define. And then you can either do a linear combination of the static analysis that you have, or you can do the sum of the, uh, the square root of the sum of the squares, right? So you add the results of each one of those, square them, add them together, and then take the square root of that, right? So you can do S, uh, RSS. So let's say here we do linear, right? And see, we just click here, right? Look here, we click, then we choose a static one and it has one factor and then come down here and choose a static two, okay? And these factors are basically the weights that we give to the stress or the combination of each one. So for example, if one of them uh, plays a more important role or in one of them specifically, you see a chance of uh, the load being... Um, basically bigger than what you did in the simulation you can add a more uh, a bigger factor than one right so for example let's say here i use five megapascal pressure right and i use 50 degrees uh, temperature but maybe the temperature who knows goes even above 50 so it goes to 60 degrees centigrade which is really really hot or goes to 55 so here what I do for static 2 which is temperature I add something like 1.1 although it's not really that linear but here I can add a little bit more weight to the temperature uh, simulations right and here so I combine them and I okay that and then I run so it can combine those two results with those two uh, weights or those two factors and here we go the result is ready so now you see that the maximum stress is 124.5, which is clearly bigger than both of those 80 and 60. It's not clearly some of the two numbers, max numbers. Why? Because the max numbers are not happening at the same location. Okay, so the max of temperature and the max of uh, pressure stresses are not at the same location. So you cannot expect this number to be the maximum here that you had which was like 64 and the maximum here that you had, which was like 80 something, right? Okay, so it's not gonna be like that exactly because again, the maximum locations are different, but clearly this is bigger than both of them. And again, this is not to the scale. So here you need to change it to the true scale if you want to, and you can animate it, right? Or you can see here, Clearly, it's the effect of both of them, as you can see here in this mid region. That's the big effect of pressure. And then here, this kind of color spots that you see, that's that temperature thing, right? So let's go back, look at it. So this is that temperature thing, right? Let's look at that, you see? And then if you look at this one here, you see? This is the highest stress area. Combine that with this one. And... Uh, you will get this guy, okay, which is both of them. If you animate it, you can see better, right? And you can, of course, add more results if you want. So you can right-click here and then uh, create a safety factor, right? 
So you see here the result is wiser. It can go here and go to the new plot. And then let's say I want a safety factor. And then again, let's say based on the one mice is a stress and then OK that. And here this is going to give you the safety factor. So you see still the minimum safety factor is 1.77. So uh, maybe I can say I'm good. And if you want, you can see results side by side, right? So you can click on this and see all the studies in this configuration. I want to see their stresses, right? So I want to see static one and static two and the pressure whistle. I want to see all of these. Then it should give you the results all next to each other, as you can see, right? So this is your uh, basically as uh, static one this is your static two and this is what this is the combined effect so if you want you can do that and you can exit compare or you can create images for the report generate report and so on so let's say for example if you say generate report and then it says uh for reports you have descriptions assumptions model information and so on that is a good one so let's go ahead and create that report and here is that report that you can see uh, basically these weights, 1 and 1.1. 1 .1, and then here are some of those results here, right? And uh, you can, as I said, see like the minimum safety factor and so on. So hopefully this video was useful to you and you learned what this pressure vessel design uh, environment or simulation does for you. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.